In the last episode, we implemented our first custom hook that was called Use Contentful to query the Contentful API. Currently, it's missing something crucial though. What happens if we send an invalid query to the Contentful GraphQL API? Let's just hit save and refresh here. And you see there that actually nothing is happening. And the reason for that is that we forgot or that we didn't implement error handling yet. So let's fix this. Let's go into our custom hook and let's say that we not only want to return data that came from the API, but also errors. But how do we do this? So to do this, we have to duplicate the use state handling and we make it deal with errors instead of data. So now we can have uh, something like errors and set errors. And initially this has the state of null. So then we can, can, we can go into the JSON response here because this is how GraphQL works. If there's an error, it will return you a nice errors object in the JSON that comes back. So let's have a look at how this looks like by logging out the JSON object. So we can now go here, we can open the console and we see our object here available and it says that data is available because we're not triggering an error right now. So let's trigger an error. And we see there that there's an errors array available. So what we can do now is that we can destructure the JSON object here into data and into errors. And with this, we can bring in some additional logic into this uh, promise handler. We can say, if there are errors, please call set errors um, with errors. And if there is data, please call set data with the already available data variable. And with this, we now already reply or respond or return some error object from this hook, which means that we can now go in here and we can deal with the errors object if there are any. So if we can now go in here and we can say, if there are errors, please return a span. And now we are mapping over the errors object. So let's go errors, map, and we don't want to deal with the objects, but we want to display the messages. So we can say error, and return error.message. And then we're joining everything together just with a comma. And with this, we should now see our error here. Let's just give it for the fun, a little bit of color, uh, color red. So with this, we now have our first step of error handling implemented. So if the query is valid, we're dealing with the data. If the query is invalid, we're showing an error and we could potentially do some more error handling here. But we're still missing a tiny, tiny case here. So what happens if our JavaScript code actually throws an error? Let's say that we have something like, oh no, a new error here. Then currently nothing is happening and the application is blowing up. The reason for that is that we're missing a catch handler for the fetch promise. And when you're using promises, you really should always have a catch handler. So let's do this. So we can do catch error and then we call set errors here. And we're dealing with, on the other hand, in the application, we're dealing with an array. So let's wrap that in an array and let's say catch errors here. So with this, we can now go in here and we can say throw a new error, um, something really bad. Stefan. And with this, we have the error handling in place. So let's see if it's covering most of the cases here. So just to go back, we're covering an invalid query. Nice, we do. Then what happens if we are not, we are not using the right token? All right, that works too. And what happens if we use a completely wrong um, URL? That works too. So with this, we now have a custom react hook that returns the data and the errors if there are any. And with this, we can build our application around it, show errors if there are any, we can show a loading spanner if the data is um, still flying, and we can give and work with all the information that we need with the GraphQL API. And now it's time to make our application a little bit prettier, and we'll do that in the next episode.